This is Digital Anarchist at RSA San Francisco 2020. Hello, everyone. It's Alan Schimmel on Digital Anarchist Network. We're live back here on Broadcast Alley at RSA Conference. We're in the Moscone West Building. And though you can't see it, you just see our background. Our guest and myself, we just see people coming up and down, escalators here, and busy buzzing around from one session to the next. It's, the weather's been beautiful in San Francisco this week. The sessions have been great. We kicked it off Monday with DevSecOps Days, and I thought we had some great sections. I was just talking to uh, Keith about it, and um, we're here now covering what's going on. Our next guest is from Palo Alto Networks, part of the Prisma team. Correct. Uh, Keith Mokis. Mokris. Mokris. Yep. I, I try, Keith. No, you're good. Hey, man, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having us, Alan. So, so Keith, you know, uh, as, as I, I guess a lot of our security people no, maybe not many of our DevOps folks. You know, Twistlock was sort of the, one of the original container security companies, right? They were, I think, really the first company that I met with that was really focused on container security. And, um, of course, they were acquired by Palo Alto. It was about a year and a half now. Uh, really only eight months, although it was feels it? much longer. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, there's, like in any kind of merger acquisition, after about six months you see a transitioning and now sort of the twist lock line is now called Prisma. Yeah, Prisma as Cloud. Part of yes. Prisma Cloud is part of Palo Alto. And but it's more than just a name change, right? One of the things we're seeing is that the uh, it's not enough just to do container security anymore. We're really seeing a transition to cloud native security. Sure. So what pe what do we when we talk about that, what do you think, what do you mean? What do we mean? Yeah, so we had this view at Twistlock that we've certainly been using at Palo Alto Networks where we talked about the cloud native continuum. And essentially, organizations have more infrastructure options than ever before for building and deploying their modern applications yep. or even for running them in a lift and shift type of scenario. And so containers are certainly one of the bedrock components of that, mm -hmm. but you also have associated technologies like Kubernetes, these other um, container-like on-demand PaaS platforms like AWS Fargate, Microsoft ACI, and Google Cloud Run, mm -hmm. where you're running your event uh, containers in a very event-driven way. And then even on one end of the spectrum, you're running cloud VMs as cattle rather than pets like you would in the data center. Yep. And then of course, serverless is obviously a key part of cloud-native platforming today. Yeah, so th there's all of that and then Look, when we look at, even just looking at CNCF, and, and you know, Kubernetes, of course, is, is a big piece of that, but there is, I forget, was there seven or eight or nine, you know, things like Helm, and the, and the service mesh stuff, Linkerd, and, and these things, right? When we look at the stack today that people are running, and a lot of them are running them on top of VMs, some are running them Definitely. on bare metal, but on top of VMs, and then you have your container and Kubernetes ecosystem that includes things like Mesh and Helm and, and you know all of these other cloud native pieces of the stack. It, it very much is a new stack, right? You're looking at someone who I, I remember when TCP IP wasn't part sure. of Windows, for instance. Right? You had to have Linux. That was one of the big reasons to use Linux. It had yeah. TCIP native. So we're seeing this new stack develop and it needs security, right? Exactly. And just say, well, I'm just going to secure the containers. That's not enough anymore. We need, you know, we're doing microservices. Exactly. And, and micro, the more microservices you add, the more you realize you need a mesh to handle the microservice. And we got to secure that. It's also a great conduit for security. Yeah. Well, and this is something I think you know, we pick up with every you know, DevOps or DevSecOps event that we work on with you, is that developers and DevOps teams are really the ones driving all of this innovation. Right. Infrastructure teams want to make them as happy as possible. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of organizations with we, which we work with where they tell their dev and DevOps teams, you pick the compute option that's going to work for your app on AWS, GCP, Azure, or even on-prem, and we'll find a way to secure it. And yep. so that's where we've really wanted to expand as a full cloud-native security platform beyond just containers. Yeah, 
You know, Peter, I, I've come up with this concept I, I call the multiverse. Sure. Right? Because today, there are a few companies who say, look, our whole thing's on AWS and that's it. Right? Most companies today, it's beyond hybrid, it's multiverse. They'll have some stuff back at the data center, some stuff they'll put on AWS, they may put some of their Kube stuff on Google, they have some very specific stuff that Azure does well, and they put it on Azure, Azure well. And so, you know, there's, there's public, there's private, there's open, there's closed, there's, you know, and for you guys, that's a, you know, look, Palo Alto's been doing security a long time, but that's a challenge, right? Exactly. Because you've got to, as you mentioned, we live in the age where the developer is the alpha predator. Sure. On the list, right? He's, he or she are going to pick where they want to, what's the best location for this application or code. And now that, hey man, you make it secure, right? Give me the tools that help me secure it no sure. matter where I put it. And in this multiverse, as you've put it, one of the big challenges is how do security teams get any sort of consistency? How, how do I know you? that an application on-prem how do I instantly get not just visibility, but compare that risk posture to an app I'm running on EKS on AWS, yeah. for example? And that's one of the problems that we're really committed to I mean, to look, solving. if it was easy, we'd all do it, right? <laughs> exactly. you, but that's your job, exactly. you've got to do it. And, and it's a constant, it's a constant uh, fight, right? So, or not a fight, but a, you know, it's a battle. And, and it's an evolving battle, too, because things change as we go as well. Um, Next thing I wanted to talk about was something that you mentioned briefly, and that is the we got to make tools better for our developers. They're security tools. Exactly. Security people need insight, but developers are using them. We got to make it better for the developers. Sure. And that, again, is a, is a challenge that we got to work with here, right? Yeah, I think one of the evolutions I've seen that's really exciting is we're starting to see security teams understand that they need to know more about all of this cloud native tooling. So some organizations that I think are really mature and visionary are having their security teams sit within or near the development and DevOps teams. I love that approach where it's not about tooling, it's about knowledge and information sharing and education. And ultimately, as everyone knows, if you can't provide tooling, and again, all of the integrated mechanisms, developers aren't going to use it. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Let me talk a little bit about RSA. Sure. So you were at DevSecOps days on Monday. We, we spoke off camera about it. it was, I thought it was a great, great day full of uh, some great uh, sessions. What about the, con the conference itself? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that's really incredible is how many organizations are talking about a cloud security strategy. Uh, when you think about all of the different topics that you can address here, it's exciting to see how RSA is really evolving to focus a lot of its time on cloud, as much as it's focusing on a lot of threat research or threat intelligence and all of the other topics that organizations are challenged by. Yeah. Um, identity is a huge challenge for organizations that are growing and understand they have a ton of endpoints to protect. This multiverse thing is going to make identity blow up. Sure. Because, yeah. you know, I got to keep my identity on Azure, Google, Amazon, back home, somewhere else, and AD doesn't go across all of that. You know, AD was a double-edged sword, right? With Active Directory, we didn't really, we were able to handle identity because it was an AD-centric world. And we're moving away from that a bit, more than a bit. And that's going to, it's going to open up a whole nother bees nest of, of, of stuff. But yeah, it, it, it's really coming. Um, we're almost out of time. I, first of all, I want to thank for all Palo Alto's doing in the DevSecOps space. You know, they, they went out and acquired Twistlock, but they, they allowed the Twistlock team to really ride. I mean, it, in a lot of times, you know what they say about acquisitions, you got to break a few eggs to make omelets, right? But in, this is a case where it really worked out well, because the Twistlock, now Prisma, uh, team has really been able to spread its wings. Definitely. I mean, Twistlock's just one piece of some oh, of the recent acquisitions right. Palo Alto Networks yes. has made. Um, Evident IO and Redlock yes. are two other leading Forgot teams. Have, yep. PureSec is another that we've mm -hmm. all brought together as part of Prisma Cloud, and we're excited to you know, continue to be a big part of this DevOps world. Where can world. people get more information on Prisma Cloud specifically? Yeah, so paloaltonetworks.com, and then head on over to Prisma in the dropdown. Very cool. Awesome, thanks okay, so much, Thank Alan. you so much. 
Palo Alto Network's Prisma Cloud team here at RSA Conference. We're live on Broadcast Alley. This is Alan Schimmel for Digital Anarchist Network. We'll be right back.